Open your gates, ye monuments of love, divine thou Lincoln on your sovereign hill. Hello, I'm John Bangay, and that was the poet William Wordsworth. A daunting encounter made more terrifying by the medieval graphic images of the tortures of hell inserted alongside the entrance doors. For those who mostly lived in medieval squalor, they needed courage to even enter this great building. The cathedral had been founded in 1072 by the Norman bishop Remigius, but his church was badly damaged, first by fire and then earthquake, and only the central entrance arches of this church remain. This great screen was added by Bishop Alexander. It is topped at each end by pinnacles. On the southern pinnacle sits the figure of St Hugh of Avalon, who extended the original 1072 Norman building, adding the glorious Hugh's choir. His symbol is the swan, recording the legendary friendship he developed with a particularly fierce swan. On the north pinnacle sits a statue of the swineherd of Stowe, a poor pig farmer from Stowe near Lincoln. Having committed to the Christian journey and finally stepping inside, this is the carefully constructed heavenly vision they would encounter. In architectural terms, this is one of the greatest visions of cathedral Gothic architecture. The Purbeck limestone piers with their delicate stone leaf carvings seem to blow in a heavenly wind and the overarching rib vault. It's stone only in name. The vision is of another world. Inspired by the newly completed choir at Canterbury, St Hugh set about extending the cathedral eastwards in 1191 with a new choir designed by his architect, Geoffrey of Noyers. His radical designs and innovations establishing what was to become known as the decorated style. Breaking free from the more prescriptive French influences, these can be seen particularly in the crocketed shafts, the syncopated double-layered blind arcades, and most famously, the crazy vault, so-called because it seemed to defy architectural logic. The choir was extended further east to contain his shrine, the famous angel choir, even more richly embellished and employing devices such as the sculptured spandrels copied from Westminster and the exquisitely carved angels which give the choir its name. Catherine Swinford, born to a humble knight, became a governess here in Lincoln to the children of John of Gaunt, a powerful noble with royal connections. The choir stalls themselves are richly ornamented with misericords and poppy heads, carvings of humans, birds and fabulous animals. When the tower was completed, a lead-covered timber spire was added, along with smaller spires on the western towers, making the cathedral, for about 250 years, the tallest building in the world. The bishop's eye offers light and life and the paths of righteousness. It employs a delicate curvilinear technique which links the lines of the medieval glass in a beautiful, delicate design. Lincoln Cathedral's chapter house is another example of early English architectural innovation. It was built between 1220 and 1235. Adjacent to the chapter house are the cathedral cloisters, unusually for a cathedral, on the north side of which sits the Wren Library, one of the few buildings outside London actually designed by the great architect. In 1545, the great central spire was destroyed in a storm.
Recently, the cathedral commissioned the sculptor Aidan Hart to produce this sculpture of Mary, who is the patron saint of this cathedral. A few years ago, I was privileged to work for a summer as a volunteer in this great cathedral. Sometimes, on a summer's morning, unlocking the doors and walking alone into this great space, following in the footsteps of kings, queens, and countless thousand commoners who trod for nearly a thousand years. 